Hi, my name is Sam. Hi, I'm Elijah. And today we're presenting a teaching called Faith. This teaching will radically change your life. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, me too, Sam. What we're going to discuss today is what is faith? Why have faith? When should we apply it? And how do we apply it? We want to understand these concepts and, and what makes faith work in our everyday life. And uh, I'm going to read Matthew or uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony, and by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. I'm going to let Sam go into some explanation of what faith is. Uh, that that verse right there is the biblical definition of what faith is. I know some people have uh, different definitions of what faith means to them. But I believe that the very foundation of faith is that is in Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance. The word substance uh, in the Greek uh, in in those days, in the Greek, the ancient Greek days, was business. Ter it was a business terminology word. It was like a title deed. And so we could say it like this. Now faith is the assurance. Now faith is the reality of things hoped for. So faith is possessing what you already have. Faith turns, re turns dreams into realities. It's creating your own reality. Now faith is the substance. It's a title deed. And so who is it that gives us the gift of faith? It's not just stuff that we just conjure up. You know, faith comes from God. Faith is a gift from God. We can't even have faith without God. And so God gives us the faith in order to turn our dreams and visions into reality. That's the whole purpose of faith. And God says, look, I'm giving you this gift of faith, and it's like a title deed. I'm giving you a title deed. And this title deed is the proof yeah. of what we have already. It's the title deed to your vision. It's the title deed to your dreams. It's the title deed to what God has for you. God gave it to you. And the gift is your inheritance. It's what you've inherited from God. And confession is interrelated with faith. It's interrelated with your inheritance. So what I confess, I inherit. Yeah. But I can't confess rightly if my thinking is not rightly. And that's where faith starts. God gives us faith, but we have to root out those false negative belief systems that causes us to go downward in life. And we have to get rid of those self-imposed limitations that keep us from having faith. And so that is what faith is. It's the title deed. It's the assurance that you have yeah. that you can create that reality in your life. God gives you that faith. It's a gift from Him. I like that. The, the gift of faith. That's awesome. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the, the tangible realm and the intangible realm. Okay, our life consists of those two realms. They're they're intertwined. They're they mingle together, and uh, you can't have one without the other. You can't have a tangible realm without the intangible realm. You can't have an intangible realm without the tangible realm. That they, they they work together. They're they're so coherent. You know they they <clears throat> they apply in each realm. So uh, one thing we need to understand about the intangible that by, about the tangible realm is that let's go a little. A little molecular structure on people here. Go here. for it. <laughs> Let's get a little scientific. Uh, one thing we need to understand about the tangible realm is that uh, it's made up of molecules. And it's those molecules are being held together by an intangible force, something we can't see. Samuel is, is a, a billion, quadrillion, zillion molecules, however many molecules is in the human body. He is, he is a lot of molecules made up while wow. being held together by an intangible force. So one thing we need to do is by faith see into the intangible realm and and look and let our our dreams, our visions, our purpose and our destiny take form within the intangible realm. 
And once it takes form within the intangible realm, we can then begin to do those things and that apply it to the tangible realm. And uh, once, once we begin to, to see the things that we need to do to, to bring the intangible realm into the intangible realm, we'll see our dreams realized. And we need, we need to have faith. Let me write these down for you here. We need to have faith. Fixation. And fruition. These are the three concepts that apply within the tangible and the intangible realm. Faith deals with the intangible realm, producing something that is unseen within that intangible realm, allowing it to take form, allowing us to see it. Fixation is when we look into the intangible realm and focus on it, and focus on what we see, and become obsessed with it, and become fixated on it. And fruition is production or the realization of dreams in the intangible realm. This these three things right here is what brings our dreams into existence. We, we often call where we're at right here in this intangible realm a reality. But the reality is, and the truth of it is, that the intangible realm is just as real as the tangible realm. Because it doesn't exist, the tangible realm doesn't exist without intangibilities. Without faith, without faith, the chairs that we sit in weren't built. Because it was dreamed up, it was thought of in somebody's mind. They had a vision of it in their mind. They fixated on it, and it produced the fruit. And, and without faith, the incandescent light bulb doesn't exist. Because he saw it in his mind, worked on it, become focused. he became focused on it, and fixated on it, obsessed with the idea that he failed 10,000 times. And he wow. said, he said I, I found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. So he didn't look at those failures as, as an end. He looked at it as, as a, a way not to do something, as, as a, a means to an end, to, to produce the fruit of what he was trying to get to, the incandescent light bulb. So we got to have faith. we got to have fixation. we got to have fruition to make the intangible realm work with the tangible realm, to bring our dreams into reality. Absolutely. And so the word fix right here, the word fixation, our mind has to be fixed. It can't just be, you know, James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We sh our mind should be fixed toward success. Our mind should be fixed toward the reward. It really should be. And faith is the precursor of our dreams. Faith is the prerequisite of our dreams and visions that we have for our life and for our family. And other people also depend upon our faith because dreams in nature, true dreams that are given from God in nature are meant to help other people. It's very simple. It's meant, it's not just a, it's not a self-centered thing. It's not a self-centered dream or vision. It is a vision and a dream that emanates from heaven into your spirit and then it begins to come out of your spirit. Because Jesus said in John 7, out of your belly or out of your spirit shall flow rivers of living water. Because that's where faith lives. And so when I begin to confess, and the only outlet for that faith and that dream is through my mouth. It's the only outlet. And the enemy wants to dam that up and keep that from flowing. Yeah. And so we have to understand and realize that out of our spirit flows rivers. It flows our dreams flows our visions, flows what God wants for our life. Out of the outlet of the mouth, we confess it and we believe it because faith really is the precursor of our dreams. It's the prerequisite. It's necessary. It's a necessity of life. Life itself demands us to dream radically. Life itself demands us to dream in a revolutionary way. It drives us. It is the driving force of living life to it to the fullest. Yeah. As I said in the in in the, earlier this week, 
I said, a lot of people let life live them. But we need to live life. Live it with the, with, to the fullest of your ability. And be available to what God has for you. Keep going. And you know what? The winners in life always expect the best. They, they're always in great expectation. And that's what faith is. Faith really is always having that expectation that you're going to have another good day. That you're going to get a raise. That you're going to get a promotion. That your family will be blessed. And that you will be blessed abundantly, excessively. Why? So that you can help other people and not just yourself. Because life is not really about us. It's about other people. And that's how we help ourselves. Oh, yeah. The only way that we can really help ourselves is to fix our mind on God and to fix our mind on the dreams and visions that God's given us. Because the nature of dreams, as I will uh, reiterate that, the nature of dreams is to help other people and to get them going into their calling and, and gifts in life. And so fixation. Fix your mind on what God has for you. And understand that your dreams have a title deed. Yeah. Understand that your the vision that you have and what you desire in life has a title deed on it. Now faith is the title deed of things hoped for. Isn't that great? That is so awesome. That's now that's faith awesome. Yeah. Okay. is the title deed. You have it. It's the assurance. It's yours. you got to believe it. And you can't entertain negative thoughts that would keep you from going forward in life. You can't afford to have it. There's a minister... Uh, by the name of uh, Bill Johnson. And he says, I cannot afford to have a thought in my head that is not from God. And it's the truth. I can't afford to have negative thoughts in my mind that would keep me from succeeding in life. Right. Why have negative thoughts when you can have positive thoughts? Why think low about yourself and about others when you can think highly of yourself and of others? Life demands us to dream radically in a revolutionary way. Yeah. The negative negative thinking costs you time, it costs you money, and it, yeah. it costs you relationships because a lot of people don't want to be around negative people, negative thinking. And it'll cost you relationships. I know myself, I try to I try to stay away, stay away from negative people because because of that. I don't want them bringing me down. I don't want them I don't want them interfering with what God has called me to do. And uh, now we're going to talk about the when. The when. when we talked about the what, the why, and now we're going to talk about the when. When to apply it. How to apply it. Uh, for me, it's every day. For me, it's an everyday thing. I, I see faith. The Bible says, now faith. You know, and, and a lot of preachers and, and people take you know take that and they, they preach that now faith. You gotta have faith now. You know, and that's true. Faith is for now. It is for the right here and right now. And absolutely. And I see it as every day. It's not it's not something I, I pick up on Sunday, put to bed Sunday night, and don't pick it up again until Wednesday night, or whenever you have service, whenever you have church, uh, or even the next Sunday. I know a lot of people are doing away with Wednesday night services. So you put it to bed Sunday night and forget about it until next Sunday. Now, faith is something that I have to get up with every day. I, I take it to bed with me. I get up with it in the morning. I, I, try to, I try to use it every day throughout my day. I try to apply faith. And some people might call it daydreaming. Some people might call it staring out into space. But I call it focusing or fixating on my dreams. Good. You know, that's good. We have to use faith every day and we have to set goals every day. What I've done, as, as I mentioned last week in the video, I, I have uh, set goals and I have them written down in my journal. And I get up in the morning, I read those goals out loud to myself. And, and I lay down at night, I read those goals out loud to myself. And I, and I keep those, it's the first thing that I see, it's the first thing, it's the last thing that I see, it's the last thing that I hear. Because I want to keep that on the forefront of my mind. I want to keep it right here so I don't forget about it. And so faith is an everyday, every minute, every second part of my life. Faith is truly now faith. And I set those goals and I see it and I read it. And, and then I do small acts. 
I do small out. Some people focus on uh, the leap of faith. You know, we hear preachers talk about it all the time. You need to take a leap of faith. You need to jump out and believe. You know, jump out on on nothing and find something there. You know, take out take the leap of faith, and that's true. You do have to take the first step of faith, and it's kind of shaky. It's kind of iffy because you are you are stepping out in the unknown territory, and uh, but we focus so much on the leap of faith, we forget about the tiny steps of faith, the little baby steps of faith. And uh, I know uh, Robert Kiyosaki and, and a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and businessmen and, and uh, leadership uh, speakers and motivators talk about taking baby steps. You know, don't don't try to take one big step and expect to be at your destination because you're going to crumble and you're falling. Now, I think that's why a lot of businesses fail. I think that's why a lot of churches fail. I think that's why a lot of people fail in life in general is because they try to take too big of a step at the beginning. You know, just take little steps. Do small acts of faith. Do small acts of faith. And, uh, and get comfortable. Get comfortable with doing it. Get in the habit of doing it. Learn, learn how to do faith. Don't don't just don't just leave it to your pastor. Don't just leave it to your your mentor to have faith. You have faith for yourself. Have it every day. Focus on it, and then you'll begin to see the fruits. And now we're going to read uh, uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. We'll, and we'll read down to verse twelve. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you, if his sons ask for bread, will give him stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want to do, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law. And the prophets. I think that's a very interesting verse. Uh, ask, and it will be given to you. In the Greek, it indicates a continuous action. So it's really said like this: Ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you. Seek and keep on seeking, and it will be given to you. Knock and keep on knocking, and it will be given to you. Real faith is persistent faith. That's what faith is. Faith does not give up. Because of circumstance or situation. Faith is not subject, uh, subjective to circumstances or situations that may arise in your life. Faith always sees opportunity. Faith never sees a problem. Faith sees the opportunity in the problem. Faith all, is always open to opportunities. Because opportunity is always there. Never say, I can't have an opportunity. I'll never experience an opportunity. That's not true. That is a false statement. There is always opportunity for those who look for opportunity. Yeah. Because if you don't look for opportunity, you'll never get opportunity. That's the whole purpose of faith. Faith prepares your heart to receive what God has for you. Yeah. Faith prepares your heart to receive the opportunities that may be there in your life. And so now faith. So when should we have faith? Now. Now. Now faith. Don't wait. Yeah. Uh, Ecclesiastes 11.4 in the New Living Translation says this. If you wait for perfect conditions, you'll never get anything done. Quit waiting for the perfect time to do what you want to do. Quit waiting for someone else to give you permission to do what you want to do in life. It is up to you. The future is up to you. It's in your hands. The ball is in your court. You can do what you want to do. Just have faith. Yeah. Have the faith, as Jesus said, as a grain of a mustard seed. And so ask and keep on asking. Don't be afraid to ask. Do you know why people don't have what they want in life and what they need? It's because they don't ask. And a lot of times they don't ask is, is uh, probably insecurity and pride. Ask and it will be given to you. Ask don't be faith. afraid. Ask in faith. Yeah. And don't let fear keep you from asking. Because asking is what activates the answer for you in your life. Right, uh, 
I'm going to close and, le- and leave you with this thought. Love is the highest form of faith. It requires you to believe against all odds. Love what you do, and you'll always be successful at it. You have to love what you do. If you love it, faith isn't an issue because you, you'll have the faith to do it. And uh, we thank you for watching our video, and we'll be back again next week to uh, present you with another video on faith. And uh, God bless you, and have a great day. God bless.